The polyphonic song of Epirus constitutes one of the most interesting musical forms in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Balkans, but also in the global repertoire of folk polyphony. The melodies of the polyphonic songs, along with some even of Epirus and Thessaly are unique in Greece that have kept the anemitone pentatonic scale, scale consisting of five notes without semitones. This scale, according to some musicologists, coincides with the way of the ancient Greeks, the literal Greek harmony. Next on the scale, components that support the oldest origin of the item forming the vocal group, oratorical, and tropical nature. Nowadays the polyphonic song of Epirus found in the northwest of the prefecture of Ianina, villages of Pogoni, Paracolimus, villages north of Kanutsa, in a few villages in northeastern Thesprotia, Samindis, Lias, Baboiri, Obla, and, mainly, in northern Epirus, Deropoli, Anopogoni, Argyricastron, Tamaro. The Polyphon Group. A polyphonic group usually consists of 4 to 11 members. Its composition includes distinct roles and structure of echoes, according to some scholars, dance elements of ancient tragedy. Partis or Partis or Sictus is a leader of polyphonic group. He introduced the song by speaking the main melody. Starts singing only the first syllables of each verse. In the polyphonic of North Epirus, Partis prefaced the entire first verse of the song. In the polyphonic of Pogoni Partis preface only the first syllables. Replied the second that turns or trumps the song, which is why it's called Gerestus, with voice by greater rhythmic motion, the role that requires great vocal ability. Typical is the abrupt ending, the cut that makes the Gerestus. When the Gerestus sings the sluggish an octave higher, called spinner. The movement of this voice, between tonal and mute of melody, reminiscent of the spinner of yarns that spin and lift down the gore every so often. Role that answers often but not always, it is the role of the rictus, which throws the song at the end of Pertus's prologisma, singing an exclamation, for example oh, oh, Antivor. Serves as the missing link between Partis and other voices, as after his entrance procession begins and the group song. And then come the isocrates that keep the equal, that is the sound of the tone of the melody. Each polyphonic group there must be at least two isocrates. The role of isocrates is fundamental and irreplaceable in the structure of polyphonic group. As louder is the pedal tone so most broad area the song goes. The accuracy of interpreting polyphonic song presupposes the existence, but also the blending of different voices roles of polyphonic group. So, the polyphonic song presupposes the collectiveness of expression, but also the rigorous distinctness of roles that echoes and the unwritten hierarchy in the composition of the team and in the distribution of roles.
The music of Linapyrus, northwestern Greece, present to varying degree in the rest of Greece and the islands, contains folk songs that are mostly pentatonic and polyphonic, characterized as relaxed, gentle and exceptionally beautiful, and sung by both male and female singers. Greek folk instruments vary throughout every region of Greece and in Epirus, clarinet is king. In Epirus, you'll see clarinet players taking center stage during saint days, weddings and other festive gatherings. The distant mellow yet melodic low trumpet-like sounds of the clarinet, in combination with strong voices, fills those festivities with beautiful traditional and familiar tunes. Distinctive songs include lament songs, miraloia, shepherd's songs, skaros, and drinking songs, tistavlis. The clarinet is the most prominent folk instrument in Epirus, used to accompany dances, mostly slow and heavy, like the menauzis, physogony, patia, studio, stutria, zagarizios, cantamini, kothios, iatros and tsamikos. The clarinet made its way to Epirus from in the late 19th century. At first, it wasn't embraced by those who preferred to dance to the sound of zornas, a woodwind instrument. In time, the clarinet became the beloved choice of instrument. Owning a clarinet also demonstrated wealth since only affluent families could afford it. During this era, clarinet players were self-taught since there were no teachers or books. It was simply about imitating sounds, and it turned out to be the best way to learn. That theory can be proven by one of the great Greek clarinetists of his time Tassos Halkias. Born in Epirus, he lived and taught music in the United States until the late 1950s. Through his teaching experiences he claimed that students who learned to play in a traditional way after years of formal music education and lessons had a difficult time. In his view, Learning the clarinet became a jungle after the introduction of the microphone because in the old days under Pyrus, you would never hear two clarinets play together. Every musician waited for his turn. Yeah.